Welcome to First Congregational Ch Church of Chicopee, where you are all welcome, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, um, you are welcome here. And uh, it's good to be here with you. Um, even though we're online, we are together as one um, and worshiping the Lord. So we have a couple announcements. So uh, today we will be collecting in a drive through um, fashion at the church. Um, food for um, um, for our ministries here, both Breaking Bread um, and Regina's Pantry, um, along with loaves and fishes. Um, and it's from 11.30 to 1.30. You can drive by and drop it off here at the church. Any donations of non-perishable food or water or drinks or anything like that would be um, very much appreciated. It helps us to keep going and to make sure that all those in need are being taken care of um, not only during this crisis, but all the time, but especially during this crisis. Um, speaking of that, we have um, some meat uh, that's available. We have um, sausages, we have cold cuts. Um, we have, so it's a program that we have made in connection with the USDA, um, but there is a restriction on this. You have to be 60 years old or above in order to receive this. There are um, different poundage in boxes. There's plenty of meat. It's frozen. Um, the sausages are um, completely mixed of pork sausages and a, a variety. The, the sandwich meat is, um, a, I think that's like 20 pounds or it, it's, uh, it, there's a lot in there. Again, you have to be 60 years old or above and you can come by, contact the church at 413-56, um, 56902, what's the phone number here? I just forgot it. So anyways, call us here at the church. I just forgot it. I think I have a lot of things on my mind. Um, and give us a call at the church. I'll get you that phone number um, and we'll uh, be glad to get that to you. Also on September 20th is Breaking Bread um, with the community. Um, that'll be held here. It's a drive through meal. You can come by and pick it up and uh, and again, the food pantry will be open. The food pantry's up all the time. The phone number here, by the way, is 413-592-0396. So if you call that for any of your needs that you have, um, we'll be glad to, um, to, to help you out. So Breaking Bread with the community, September 20th from 5 to 6.30. You can drive by, pick up a meal. There's a hot meal um, that'll be available along with sandwiches, snacks, drinks. Um, the pantry will be open. Again, call us at 413-592-0396 um, with any of your needs and we can, uh, we can help you with that um, at any time. So the church is not closed. It's never been closed. We're not meeting together in worship, but the church is definitely open and our ministries are going forward. If you have any pastoral care needs uh, or need to speak to myself, again, call that phone number 413-592-0396. Um, and we'd be glad to help you out. So let's leave all the burdens that we have on our shoulders throughout the week behind and prepare to worship God together. Let us come together in the spirit of prayer. Surprising God, you have an uncomfortable habit of showing up where we least expect you, in a burning bush, in the face of an enemy, in a livestock feed trough, on a rough wooden cross, Turn our lives upside down with your radical love. Help us fully embrace your surprises, even as we revel in the joy of being fully embraced by your all-encompassing grace and mercy. We pray in the name of your most amazing surprise of all, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, let us worship the Lord together.
shelter of the Most High, we who come to be inspired and changed, we who know how little we know, in one voice let us offer up this our prayer of invocation, God, you are made known to us in the rustling wind that blows, in the blazing fire that does not consume in the face of the good and the deep of the unknown we meet you here we accept your greeting we welcome your inspiration we await the change you have in store for us draw us into you inhabit our spirits focus our attentions bring us to you you who are already with us Help us to be as you would have us be. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, here and everywhere, now and always. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is hymn number 580, Here I Am, Lord.
confession, let us consider questions inspired by the Apostle Paul. Is our love always genuine? Do we resist the evil we see? Do we consistently seek to serve God? Are we hospitable to strangers? Do we offer blessings to our enemies? Do we even know what this means? Do we have close relationships with people who are really different from us? Do we seek revenge on those who have wronged us? Good friends, we do these things. We do them often. Maybe not all at once, but they are actions that are part of our human condition. They are also actions that turn us away from the love of God that is always offered to us. In this time of confession, God invites us to examine all of this and to repent, which really means just to turn back. So let us confess our sins, and as we do, let us turn back as we pray first in one voice and then in silence. This is our prayer of confession. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that our love isn't always genuine. We see evil and wring our hands instead of resisting it. We forget to consider more ways to serve you. We turn our back on strangers who could benefit from our hospitality. We do not pray enough for our enemies. We associate with our own kind, fearing the other. We relish in fantasies of revenge. For all this and for all that burdens our heart today, O oh God, we seek your forgiveness. Have mercy on us and hear our prayers. God's mercy extends beyond the bounds of even our collective imagination. God's love seeps through any wall we could ever put up. God's goodness is, holds more power than the sum of all our sins. It is because of that extensive, seeping, powerful, and bold love, I declare to you in the name of the blessed that God forgives all of our shortcomings. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now in one voice, let us offer up the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from sin. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. of sharing our joys and concerns, so let us prepare to come together in a time of prayer. Speak to us, God. 
and prepare to come together in a moment of prayer. Lord, we love the drama of the burning bush. Here is the quaking Moses telling God that God has made a mistake. Moses does not believe that he can perform the task to which God has called him, but God knows better. God will provide the support structure for this awesome task. We are just like Moses. We tell God that God has made a mistake. We are not able or worthy to undertake the task of hope and peace for this world. We mumble about responsibilities and commitments, but God chides us to be in service by helping others. God will give us the strength, the tools, the support that we need. We do not need to fear. Lord of hope, we come to you this day. We have followed many paths, and the one of hope leads to this doorway. Enter our hearts this day as we share our joys and concerns in prayer and in the actions and service that follows. We lift before you situations and people who are in need of your healing mercies and your peace. Help us to be those who would bring this peace to them. Let us be in prayer, lifting our concerns to God as we pray for Hector, a young boy in need. As we pray for our country, that no one, no one tears it apart. We pray for those that are affected by COVID-19 and all effects, both illness and the effects that the wrath of our economy brings on them, loss of jobs, loss of the ability to survive. We pray for all of our people who are divided now, divided and becoming more divided. Help us to become one, to become one in your name, one under you, as our oath says. We give thanks for many things. We give thanks for this church that you have let us use to bring your love back into the community. We give thanks for all the ministries, all the volunteers, all the people who are getting help from these ministries. We give thanks for all the people who are working to help bring this country back together once again. This day we have brought before God the names of people and situations that lay heavily on our hearts. We feel powerless to bring the healing words of hope and so we offer you these situations, O oh God of compassion and mercy. Our trust in you is rightly placed, for you hear our prayers and will respond. We can count on God to be present with us and with all those in need. Now it is our turn to respond to God's call with a fervent yes, trusting in God's presence and guidance. Let us go forth to serve joyfully and confidently in God's world. And we ask all this in the name of your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our friend, Jesus. Amen.
Good morning. Our first reading today is from Exodus 3, verses 1 through 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmaster. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelis, Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign to you. It is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, I, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. <coughs> Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals upon their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. God is so speaking.
Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Today's gospel reading comes from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day be raised and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone wants to become my follower, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May your ears be open to hearing and your hearts to receiving. Plan that is given to us, then there has to be an intent of that plan that we fully understand in order for us to execute the plan. And this comes about no matter what you're doing. In the military, there's an operations order, and in that operations order, it's read the commander's intent. So you know that all of these tasks that are being done, what the commander wants you to accomplish at the end. In industry and business, there's a plan, and then the CEO or the COO or somebody explains to you exactly why they're doing this. Plans are important, but the intention of those plans are even more so. I remember when the current Pope took power. The thing that was very heartening to me to hear was that he told his priests to leave their offices, to leave the comfort of their buildings, and get out in the street. Now, I'm not kidding myself. I know that this Pope is still Roman Catholic and there are great chasms between what he does and what I do, in fact, in theology, but yet in his social justice, in him saying to get out into the streets, to get out on that sacred ground is important. See, this building that we're in now that you're not in with us, it's nice. It has a lot of historical relevance. Culturally, it's important to the city of Chicopee. To each one of us, it's important because it makes us feel good. And yes, this is sacred ground. But when I walk out onto Chicopee Street, that too is sacred ground. The sacred ground, the place of the holy, the holy of holies that was read in Hebrew scriptures, God does not stay in this one building. God is everywhere. Now, holy moly, Peter went in just a matter of verses from the rock that Jesus will build his church on to Satan. If you remember last week, we read Jesus saying, wow, Peter, you got it. You're right on. You're the one that we're going to make it. And today he says, get behind me. You're nothing but an obstacle to what I'm trying to do. Peter, you don't understand my intent. You see, Peter was, when he stated that Jesus was the Messiah, he was really comfortable within that theology. 
He was comfortable saying Jesus was the one that God sent to save us. But he left that comfort zone when Jesus said, I have to go to Jerusalem and they're going to kill me. And Peter said, no way. And Jesus said, if you come out of your comfort zone, then you'll be doing the thing of God. But if you stay in it, then you're doing things only for yourself. Jesus said, pick up the cross and follow me. Now know this, that not particularly meaning the crucifixion cross that Jesus will be nailed to because nobody knew that was going to happen. Jesus is saying, pick up the burdens that go along with my ministry. See, the cross was known back then as a way that the Romans ended their problems of a way of suffering and pain. But then Jesus tells Peter, get behind me because you're an obstacle. He's saying, anyone that wants to come with me, let me lead. You can't do it. In John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way. And if we are going to believe that Jesus is the way, then we need to lead, let Jesus lead. You see, we're not in the driver's seat. God is. Self-help is not self-sacrifice. Prosperity gospel is not the gospel of Jesus. But... Jesus asks us to lose ourselves, to lose our needs, our wants, our desires within his mission. Because he says, if you don't do that, before you know it, I will be back. The church tries to do things in a secular way. And much of it is very important. We have to have budgets. We have to control our money. We have to be smart. But yet, we're not trying to turn a profit. The secular way has good ways of doing business, economy running, people have money. But the secular way is not the way of Jesus. The consumerism that we live today, I'm guilty of it as much as the next person. The consumerism is not Jesus' way. I don't know how many of you have heard or can remember the Doobie Brothers and their song, Take It to the Streets. I'm not sure why the Doobie Brothers wrote that song, but they're saying, take it to the streets. See, we're really comfortable in this church. Even without the air conditioning, you can hear the windows are open. It's cool. You can hear the motorcycles going by. It's nice to be in this sacred space. It's not so nice to walk the streets, to go down to the river, the Connecticut River, and give homeless people food. It's not so nice when people look and sneer at you because of what you're doing is keeping homeless people here. Yeah, they really want to live on the banks of the Connecticut River in Chicopee. Think about it. How hard is it for you to convince your child to do what is good for them? It's not easy. They always have a reason not to do it. It could be something as easy as taking medicine or something as hard as getting them to school and getting them to learn in this period of COVID. Now think of what Jesus had to do to convince his disciples that, yeah, it's nice to walk with me when everybody's walking up and wanting to listen to us and thinking we're important, but what is it going to be like when we walk into Jerusalem and they want to nail me to a tree? See, if you listen to what the Doobie Brothers say in their song, they say, take the mission, the message to my brothers. Wherever people live together, that's where you need to go. Telling me the things you will do for me is not the way to be. Jesus knew that the message he was bringing to all of us, the message of love, the message of helping the poor, that was not going to be an easily received message. 
You hear it all the time, let them pull themselves up by their bootstraps. What if their boots don't have straps? Let them help themselves. Only good can come to those who help themselves. What if they can't? Jesus did not shy away from his mission, even though Jesus knew that this mission he was doing was going to kill him, was going to make him suffer. See, I know that I pray, maybe not in the exact words, but Jesus helped defend me from Satan. I'm not talking about the Satan in the exorcist. I'm talking about the Satan that's in the secular world. The one that wants me to forsake everything so that I can have bigger and better and newer things. Take up your cross doesn't mean that you have to walk to execution. Take up your cross may know that you may have to live with pain or self-sacrifice. See, suffering of any kind can be your cross. If you accept that burden and move on, that is what Jesus is trying to say for you. He's saying that you need to dismiss the cultural message of save yourself. Instead, you need to carry a bigger and better message of save your neighbor. Jesus challenges us in a revolutionary way. He was revolutionary in the beginning, and he's revolutionary 2,000 years from that time. And that revolution is self. It's the revolution of love, not self. It's the revolution of loving your neighbors as you love yourself. It's the revolution of feed those who are hungry. It's the revolution of being with people that don't look like yourself. It's the revolution of letting you know that you have the power, the ability, and the talent to help Jesus bring that mission to the world. Moses told God, I'm not good enough. And God told Moses, yeah, you are. We tell God every single day we're not good enough. And yet God doesn't want to listen to that. God wants you to know that you are loved. And in that love, you need to reflect that love back into your community. Not help, hate, not self-help, not self-serving but sacrificial love to your neighbors. Giving the abundance that you have, giving the privilege that you own in order to help those who are not so privileged, that are not so loved. So in the words of Pope Francis and in the words of the Doobie Brothers, we need to take it to the streets because the streets are sacred space. The streets is where God wants us to do our mission. Amen. You know, it's really hard here because we're not together. But pay close attention. If you look all around you now, all you can see is need. But is that how you think God sees it? See, I think God looks around and God sees need, yes, but God also sees great abundance in his creation. God sees all the gifts that God has already given us, and God sees opportunity. As a church, we are invited to look around through the same lens, seeing opportunity, gifts, and possibilities around us, while acknowledging the deep needs that surround us each person here watching today has something to give. And each person is a need. I invite you to pray for, prayerfully reach within yourself, acknowledging a need you bring today. Recognizing that every person around you brings a need as well as a church, as well as a church. It's our job, our calling to join together and meet those needs. Share them with us, and we will receive them prayerfully. And as the offering is gathered, however it's gathered, 
I invite you to acknowledge in your giving that you had a gift to share today. And I invite you to share that gift generously with others, trusting that the people around you will do the same thing. Share your gifts with us and we will receive them gratefully.
Amen. Revolutionary indeed. As God calls all people to this table of forgiveness, peace, and loving forgive, or fellowship, First Congregational Church of Chicopee affirms an inclusive and open communion table. All persons, all ages, ethnicities, sexual orientations and identities, dis and abilities, religious affiliations, and other distinguishing features are welcome to partake of this sacrament which affirms that we are all part of God's family and are to come together in sacred relationship. Love and peace are the uniting virtues of this spiritual meeting place. <clears throat> Therefore, all who wish to join this ritual of unity are invited to do so, providing that you do so in the spirit of peace and mutual love for one another. Come. The table is ready, and Jesus sits at the head of the table, whether here in this building or in your home, and all are welcome, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. We remember that on the evening that Jesus was arrested and eventually killed, he took bread. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat from it, for this is my body which will be broken for you and for all of humankind. Each time you eat from the common loaf, do it in remembrance of me. When supper had ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave God thanks and praise, took the cup and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of the new covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all of humankind. Each time you drink from the fruit of the vine, do it in remembrance of me. <coughs> God, may this bread connect us more closely with you and with our neighbor, near and far. Let us come together in the spirit of prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come and bless this bread, we pray. Remind us of the interconnectedness of people around the world. Come, Holy Spirit, come and bless this cup of covenant and bless this fruit of the vine, we pray. May this simple meal bring us into union with you, your people, and your world united in one body of Christ. Amen. This is the body of Christ, which brings to us a revolutionary means of love. Take and eat, and may you hunger no more. This is the cup of the new covenant, which is here for all to bring us all together under the love of God. Take and drink, and may you thirst no more.
loving and gracious God, thank you for this holy meal and thank you for Jesus and his all-inclusive love for humanity. Thank you for this day, which we worship and serve you. Amen. So I want to remind you um, again that today we have a drive-through um, collection for non-perishable food uh, to include drinks like water um, to help us to sustain our, um, re our three missions that we're doing right now, Breaking Bread, Regina's Pantry, and Loaves and Fishes. And also um, to remind you that we do have um, food, frozen meat available, and it's going to be, it's here now, and it's going to continue um, again for at least one more um, gathering from the state of Massachusetts. It's a USDA program, so it is controlled that you have to be 60 or above. Um, you can call the church at 413-592-0396 um, to do um, that. And you know, I just want to bring, because there's a couple things that um, come to my mind. Um, we, I say, to let the burdens of everything that we have continue during the week, it's a good thing. I mean, if you try to focus on everything that's going about, um, you might forget things like the church's phone number. Um, so we need to stay focused on God and focused on what we are doing to bring that love of God. And also that... <clears throat> Although the sermon and everything is important, that we're kind of a different um, congregational church is that we do communion every week. So the service, although the sermon ends, isn't over. So the service, the communion aspect of the service um, is pretty important to us too. So um, just letting um, everybody know that. So um, I hope you guys have a great week. Our hymn of journey this evening is Let There Be Peace on Earth. the source of our word and spirit, one be with us now and always. Amen. <laughs>